Everything runs through Second Everything runs through Second Tortillas. All right. Welcome to the Rolling In Dope Podcast. I'm your host, Nick. With me, as always, is Dylan. And welcome back, the Lone Ranger, the man himself, the California kid, some say. Oh, Troy boy. Troy, it's good to see you. Oh, man. Glad to be back uh, in present time, not past time. And I will yeah. note that I watched uh, the podcast. I sent you all my picks beforehand, too, which I noticed you guys didn't say that conveniently because of the three of us, I was the only one with a winning record. Uh, and then the last part Prove was... Prove it. Yeah, I don't, yeah <laughs> I don't remember seeing any picks. The, the other piece is um, I was sabotaging Dallas, and it looked like I succeeded. And he does not run a faster 40 than me, Dylan. I don't know where you got that from. Prove you it. can't just be throwing out these facts. I can I I have video. I have, throwing out these facts. I have video of him in, in a pair of Ranger Dylan, jeans no, no, no. running a 40. Dylan, did you hear what he said? What? Troy said you can't be throwing out these facts. Yeah. Sorry, misinformation. Weird. Weird, because yeah. the first thing you said was facts. Yeah. Um, don't worry, so, I'll hit it out. Yeah, Troy, that's what I was going to ask you. There was some some real drama last week between you and old Dilly Dow, huh? Yeah, that you guys were really trying to cause. I'd say you were stirring no, the pot. Okay, all right, all right. Mm. You know what? We've heard about enough, Troy. This, Troy, this is why you get yourself in these situations, all right? You just say one too many things. And now, you know what? Maybe we bring Dallas back. I don't know. Wait, <laughs> I like here's, here, here's what I will tell you. We've got it. We've got a not a celebrity guest picker this week. Could it be Dallas? I don't know. Here's the only issue. Dallas is kind of like a small celebrity right now, so I don't know. He might be yeah. too famous to be the picker. We'll see. Dude, he, sh he shot himself in the foot multiple times, so he's he can't even walk this week. Oh, dang. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right. How did we do last week? You got it, Chief. Know. Let's see. Let's see. Four and six? All right. All right. All right. I'll take that. Uh, Troy, I, whatever. I'm not, I don't <laughs> believe that. Uh, Dallas was six and three, Troy, or eight and I three. Talking, I was talking about the fellas, six and three. And then Dylan. All right. I mean, look, you can't I, I, win them all. Yeah. But you know, I'm always going to choose against AM. and I'll do it again and again and again. Yeah. It's, yeah. No one saw that coming. Troy 29 and 21. Yeah. I'm back, baby. Three good mm -hmm. weeks in a row. Can't Dylan. Stop me. Hey, Dylan, I'm going to yeah. skip the podcast next week, and then I'm going to give you like 20 picks after the fact that we're correct. Mm -hmm. I have the text messages. Troy, I, you I can't go... read. <laughs> Listen, let's not so, get into that. So, so, so I refuse to believe you have text messages. Yeah. <laughs> hey, well, 113 and 94 on the year, so still positive. Yeah, put yeah. Six hey, next look. Yeah, yeah, Troy, Troy's making us put an asterisk next to it. Hey, that's pretty good for a podcast. I'll tell you what. That's uh, you're making money if you're betting with the boys. Yeah, but we're we're cutting it close. <laughs> I mean, I'm almost almost twenty almost twenty games above five hundred. Yeah, yep, that's true. We gotta have. We gotta that's not. I mean, that's not. Weeks. That's not nothing. You're making. I mean, come on, Troy. That's. Hey, you can you know, some, you're doing. You're doing. You're doing hundred. You're doing. Hundred dollar bets, you know, well, you're up two grand. You have to know, Nick. He's also coming from the vantage point of his a hundred percent picking games after the fact record. So to right. him, you know, you should be undefeated. That's it's amazing a good point. That I still get games wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy that I pick them after the fact that I'm still missing about well, that, you know a third of the games. In, that goes into what Nick said about him not being able to read. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why this keeps happening. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Let's let's uh let's go ahead and get started here, Troy. Let's pull up the first game. All right. Starting off the Big 12 slate. We got number 16 Utah versus Arizona State. Arizona State is plus five over under 46. Troy, you feeling like you're ready to lead us off? Yeah, I got it. I can handle it. So here's what my thoughts are. I don't think uh, Cam Bad Moon Rising actually exists. I think he's in a figment of our imagination. I hear he's supposed to start this week. I will see it. I'll believe it when I see it. 
uh, and I haven't seen it in a while. So I'm going to go ahead and say he's not, uh, not going to play. Utah is coming off of a bye week, so I think that's obviously good for them. Uh, traveling to Arizona uh, to play Arizona State, I think this game's going to go under, so I'm going to go ahead and pick the under at 46 uh, before it gets any lower. Um, so something, something I love that we did in the past was, uh, our, uh, don't be scared podcast. And when we talked about Bigfoot and, uh, Bigfoot in Provo, Utah, I'm starting to think that it might actually big be Bigfoot at the university of Utah. Uh, and I say that because you're just as likely to see him as you are to see cam rising. Um, <laughs> where, where is this guy? Is he real? Does he exist? People say they've seen him. I, I just don't know. Um, and when you see him, should you be scared? Uh, should you stay away? I don't know. I, I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens. I, you know, I love Arizona State's run game. I think, um, I think uh, Troy, your favorite running back, is going to have a, have, a, have a different game or a, a decent game. And I think Arizona keeps it, keeps it close. I think they're um, – I don't think they're phonies. I don't think they're the, the great, but I don't think they're fake either. So I think plus five, I'm going to go ahead and ride that. Um, and I do think Utah needs to prove something. So uh, and if they beat Arizona by more than five, then okay, Utah might be, you know, they might be where they're supposed to be. But if they can't handle that, then I think Utah is in for a rough year. Dylan? Yeah, I'm on the same uh, bandwagon as not. The, this Cam Rising guy is not real. He's supposed to start apparently this week, but I agree. I think he just like Bigfoot or anything like that. A lot of people say he's real. A lot of people say they've seen him, but I mean, this guy's just nowhere to be seen. Yeah. That being said, he plays or not, I don't care. I'll take Arizona State at home getting the five. Hopefully they can keep it close. We played them. It'll make us look a lot better. So <laughs> <laughs> please, Arizona State, look competitive against Utah. I'll take the five points. There you go. I like it. I like it. All right, moving on. We got Arizona. We know those Wildcats. Uh, Versus number 14, BYU. Mine, uh, BYU is favored by three over under 48 and a half. Uh, Dylan, lead us off. So you got an Arizona team coming into this game maybe a little bit angry after a, a loss to our uh, beloved Red Raiders. BYU. Angry Cats. Uh, they're very angry cats. The other cats on the other side, Nick the Cougars. Uh, I don't oh, think I really some, uh, some sexy cats. I don't think I believe in this team. I know they're what like 14th in the country right now, undefeated. But as we always say on this podcast, if there's one thing we say, it's water, water always finds, finds its level. Its level. <laughs> and this team needs to come back to reality at some point. I'll take Arizona plus three, and I'll take Arizona on the money line as well. Troy. Yeah, I I mean, but we don't you said BYU. We're not sure who they are. I mean, all they've done is win, so we know that. Arizona has not won very much. And you know, they're supposed to be this good team. I think at some point they do bounce back. I just don't know if it's against Utah coming off a of bye week. Um, however, I'm gonna get a little silly here, and I guess I'm gonna take Utah first half plus two and a half. I think they're winning at halftime, and BYU is able to figure it out. You say uh, Utah? You say Florida. Utah? Sorry, not Utah. BYU. Troy, uh, are, are you are wait. you insinuating that everyone of the Mormon faith is the same? <laughs> Nick, let's not get into the let's not get into that. <laughs> yeah, uh, Troy. Hey, hey, I didn't. <laughs> yes, uh, I just yes, asked the question. Arizona plus two and a half at the half. Wait, half. so are you taking BYU or Arizona? <laughs> Arizona plus two and a half first half. Okay. So you would take plus two and a half in the first half, but you wouldn't take plus three for the game? We're scratching it all, right? <laughs> Gets to BYU plus three. Wait, what is he doing? <laughs> BYU this, is, my- hey, this, is how he, this is how he ends up eight and oh. I know. Because he just he throws out all these random picks. We don't know what the hell he's saying. Luckily, so what- we just luckily we hired a producer this you, week. That's that's in, hey Troy. Troy, guess what? The best thing taking? we ever did, the <laughs> best thing we ever did was hire a producer because now he can keep you honest. Derek, here's all right, right this Derek's down, in Derek. the background right now. Derek's Troy, give him a pick to put down. Yeah. Arizona, this is gonna get funky, all right?
Derek, Arizona plus two and a half first half. <laughs> BYU minus three. <laughs> Derek already quit, he says. <laughs> Jeez, Troy. Troy. Troy, you were the one that was asking for a producer. Do not make him quit on the first day. <laughs> Listen, all right. Now I get why this is so difficult, Troy. <laughs> he just texted yeah, us saying yeah. he quit. Yeah. <laughs> he said it's oh plus my first God. half. Thank you, Derek. So Troy, so Troy, basically what you're saying basically what you're saying is Arizona's gonna keep it close in the first half and then they're gonna lose. Yeah. All right. Okay. That's what that's all right. All right. Jesus Christ. I, I, don't, I almost don't even want to pick right now because Troy just yeah. made me so upset. Um, okay, Dylan, do you want to hear what I hope happens or do you want to hear what I think is going to happen? I, I don't know what to think anymore at this point, Nick. <laughs> yeah, all right. So so give me, give me BYU minus three at home. Um, it, that's a tough place to play. I don't, I don't know why. I, it just is. So give me BYU minus three at home. I would love to be wrong here. I would love to be wrong. Please, Arizona. Arizona, if you win this game, it would be awesome. For Arizona. <laughs> what did you just do, Troy? You just, you just disconnected. <laughs> Wait, where did you... <laughs> Nick, are you sure you don't want to take, like, Arizona first quarter, BYU second quarter, Arizona third quarter? <laughs> Actually, you know what, Derek? <laughs> Give me Arizona money line. I'll take Arizona money line. Right, write both of those down. Right, so BYU's yeah, no. gonna cover three, but Arizona's no, gonna no, win. Can't, no, cancel. <laughs> We're gonna cancel BYU minus three because it. I'm not gonna be cheering for that. I'm gonna be cheering for Arizona money line. So let's ride with my heart. Arizona money line. That's what we're getting right now. Let's go. Right. BYU goes down. I will say this. Remember at the beginning of the year, guys, and, that, and we need to come back to that podcast now that's almost halfway through the season. No. Because I think I did a good job. I think I nailed it. The over-unders. No, remember the over-unders for wins? Yeah, no, yeah. I don't think that existed. <laughs> I think you guys might not have done a good job. I think I did a very good job. I know I didn't because I'm pretty sure I had the bottom of the Big 12 being terrible and all those teams are at the top. You did, and I had and I had them. I was pretty high on them. And I was even – I was high on BYU too. I think I was the only one that had BYU over. So that's kind of my like – that's kind of like my sharp pick. Anywho, let's keep moving on. Has oh, Dylan's already picked, huh? Yeah. Dylan already picked. Oh, here we go. Here we go. SEC game. Number one, Texas. Versus number 18, Oklahoma. Oklahoma is <laughs> plus 14, over under 49. Everybody from both fan bases keep telling me, this game gets weird. This is a close game. So I'm buying into that Kool-Aid, I think. Uh, my, my brain from watching these teams tells me UT is going to hammer them. It's going to be ugly. Um, but you know, this game just does mean I think both teams get up for this game. I think Oklahoma's defense is good. So I'm going to go ahead and take Oklahoma plus 14. I don't think they lose by that much. Uh, I'll ride with my, my father-in-law is a big OU guy. Shout out, shout out D-Money, hold Daryl. So we're going to go ahead and take Oklahoma plus 14 uh, because all the UT and OU fans tell me that this game is always close. Troy. Yeah, my brain wasn't working last segment, so I apologize for that. And I'm just going to turn it off on this segment. Um, so Quinn Ewers is back. I think it's going to be a slow pace. Uh, to your point, everything is telling you that the under is supposed to hit. So because of that, I'm going to take the over at 49. I I didn't say the under was going to hit. You said uh, Oklahoma's good defense. So <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't mean that. That doesn't mean anything to me. The only hope that Oklahoma has and to win this game is if it goes under. So that's that's the kind of viewpoint we're talking about here. You don't ever put words in my mouth again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you the blueprint, all right? You know, you said you were going to turn your brain off, but you really reached you were reaching for that one. Yeah, no, I didn't reach. What is, what is happening today? All right, Dylan. You go I'm to California, here. Troy, and you think you you think you're hot stuff now. You go to a couple wineries. Troy went to the Camus Winery. Now look at him. Smug son of a bitch. <laughs> hey, 
Sorry, sorry, sorry. Bleep it, bleep it, bleep it. <laughs> now it's Troy. Now, Troy, Troy. Now you can show Derek how to bleep things. <laughs> He's not. I'm, all right. <laughs> He's yeah, the I'm, producer now. I'm torn. He's on the this, captain guys. now. I'm torn right, on this. I don't know because I, I, I I'm taking the over. I'm taking over forty nine, which. To Troy's point, I think he's right. That usually would lean towards Texas. But it's a rivalry game. Then weird things happen. Oklahoma might actually score some points. I'm going to do the weird thing here. The uncorrelated pick. And I'm going to do Oklahoma plus 14. And I'm going to take the over 49. Makes no sense. Both will hit. We'll see what happens. Dylan gets it. And it, hey, hey, <laughs> and it just means more now, guys. <laughs> you know? Said. The game just means more. Troy, how many more picks do we have? By the way, is this is it this one? Then we're <laughs> we got to rattle them off. We got four more games, five actually. Oh my gosh, dude, we're giving the people what they want. All right, just make money. sure you, make sure you cue me in when we're going to bring in our not a celebrity guest pick. Yeah, this is a, th- that it's going to be a sh- it's going to be a great one. Just so you guys know. <laughs> All right, <laughs> number four, Penn State versus USC. USC is uh, the the dog by plus three and a half over under fifty one. Um, I'm taking the over here. I like the over. Give me the points. Uh, fifty one. Uh, I think I think it can hit. We've seen what Penn State can do to bad teams, and I'm sure that they can do it versus good teams as well. And then uh, I think it's about time USC. You know, I think they're going to put up some points. So. 51. I like that. It's a good, it's a good safe number. Troy? Yeah, I was looking at the over. I, I'm going to go with you on that one. I only worry about uh, Dylan's guy, Miller Moss, here. Uh, he is going to be playing against a stout D line against Penn State. Uh, so you worry about that. They are at home. Uh, they need a huge win because their season is starting to look uh, very worrisome with the couple of losses that they have. Uh, they really can't afford many more being one and two in conference already. So this is a real uh, punch back game. So I'm going to go ahead and take the over. Uh, and then I'm also going to take USC plus three and a half. Really? Yeah, they got, they got to win. They got no choice. So. Well, they, I mean, every week, no one has a choice. <laughs> well, they, I guess they, they always have a choice. I don't know. I mean, all right. Dylan. Yeah, um, all all week I've been saying this is going to be Penn State, and the more I look at it, they have to travel across the country. I'll take USC plus three and a half. They need it. Troy's right. This is season's on the line here. If I'm going to back my guy Miller Moss, he needs to have a big game here. I'll take USC plus three and a half. I'll take the money line and I'll take the over. Holy smokes! Yeah, gee, Willikers, Batman, volume picks, Troy. Um, Derek's man, I just, typing away. Hey, give me. I'll, I'll also take Penn State minus three and a half. There you go. <laughs> He's fading the fellas. Sorry, boys. I just USC sucks. I agree. UNC does suck, but this is USC. No, South Carolina game cops, Troy. <laughs> Wait, is that I not meant the game cops? All right, number nine. Oh, oh God. Didn't we get? Didn't didn't some A and M fan get upset about us talking about Ole Miss on on uh, X? Yeah, great. Yep. Yeah, Dallas has made enemies. Yeah, good. Number nine, Ole Miss versus number thirteen, LSU. LSU's plus three. Apparently, there is no over under in this game. Hey, listen, we all it, make mistakes. It, it's sixty two. <laughs> it's sixty two. Not, ac- not according to Rolling in Doe. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Dylan, why don't you why don't you start us off? What's your picks? All right, guys. Oh, big, big game here. Um, we've all been seeing Ole Miss get a lot of heat for uh, faking injuries after big plays and first downs. This is a huge game in the SEC. You got a home dog. We love home dogs, right, guys? I mean, I would think you got it back, the home dog here. I, lo- I love I love hot dogs. I do love hot dogs. But um, also got some fun nuggets on this game. We always like a little, a little, little bit of stats to back us up. Brian Kelly is thirty-five and eighteen against the spread as an underdog. That's sixty-six percent. He is twenty-seven, thirteen and one, sixty-seven and a half percent when catching over a field goal, and he's fifteen, eight and one following a bye, which is sixty-five point two percent. 
That's three separate stats saying to back Brian Kelly. So take LSU plus three, take him on the money line. Yeah, I think you got to back Brian Kelly and his uh, family. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take, actually, I'm going to take LSU money line. Uh, I like the pick, excited about the pick. Um, it's a hard place to play, so we'll see what happens. Uh, Troy, very interested, though, in you. You know, we're talking a lot of smack about Dallas, and you are coming in off your bye week, and you're really having a poor showing. I don't. I wouldn't say it's poor. I'd probably give myself a B minus, but yeah, not great. Not great. You, Brain's not working. What I will. What I will tell you is, you did not come in and silence the critics. Is that fair? <laughs> it's uh, it's up for debate for sure. We yeah, might have you to you rotate. you left the door open. You left the door open. We might have a Michigan quarterback situation going on. You, if you got, hey, if you got two, you got none, and you yeah. definitely have left the door open. What is yeah. your pick? Yeah, well, Dylan. And Nick, you both took the words right out of my, my mouth. It looks like we're all going to be ro uh, rolling together. Again, LSU home game off a of bye week. Uh, Dylan, you did not mention, which I was waiting for, one of your favorite things is to say a common opponent. Uh, Nick already mentioned this team, South Carolina. I don't care uh, about common opponents. You used, last year you did. Uh, I don't like it. I don't <laughs> so like common saying, opponents. Yeah, and, Styles yeah, I know, make matchups. I I know why you didn't bring it up because Ole Miss won twenty-seven to three, and uh, LSU squeaked by thirty-six to thirty-three. <laughs> so um, I'll go ahead and throw out that game as well. I think Brian Kelly needs to win at home to stay relevant in the playoff conversation. So I will think that uh, Ole Miss takes a, a loss and uh, LSU uh, wins plus three. Give it rolling. Let's keep it rolling. Oh, mama, what a game. Number two, Ohio State versus number three, Oregon. Oregon is the Dow plus three, over under 54. Give me the over. I love over 54 here. Give me it. Let's see what happens. Um, I think we've seen what Ohio State can do with all their athletes. And then Oregon, I think they can, they can light it up. Um, they need to just keep up with Ohio State. So I think this game will be close. Um, and for in order for it to be close, I think it's going to be higher scoring. So give me 54. Whoever, I don't care. Dill, you go. <laughs> yeah, Dylan, this, you need to go so Troy can steal your pick. This, uh, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Try to keep his lead. I'm, I'm surprised he just doesn't stop picking. All right, I'll take um, Ohio State in this one. That defense is for real, but. I want to back Nick here and say, you, you just think about it. Let's not even think about who's on the field. Let's just think about the jerseys. You put Ohio State <laughs> against Oregon. You, you, you bet, knew exactly why you I bet picked the, the over. over. <laughs> you bet the over. So I'll go ahead and take the over as well. So Ohio State minus three, and I'll take over 54 as well. Was, I think this Dylan, Ohio State team is great. <laughs> literally why I picked the over. You you put those two jerseys on the field. You're telling me you ain't scoring 54 points? <laughs> Come on, man. Troy. I wasn't. I wasn't going to take the over, but I'm going to rock with you because of the jerseys. Uh, and the other thing I'm going to take is two things, two more things. So Ryan Day, right, looks like he's got things cooking. It looks like he's going to succeed this year. Down year for Michigan, down year for Penn – not down year for Penn State, but should be able to beat him. How about the newcomer, Oregon? This is why um, Dan Lanning stayed there, right? He wanted to build something. He wanted to be something. And so this is his first, uh, first point to prove it. So I'm going to go ahead and take Oregon to cover an Oregon money line uh, in this Heck game. Yeah. And I think Ryan Day keeps his woes, and Ohio State uh, continues on the same way over the last few years. He, couldn't, he got rid of Jim Harbaugh, uh, but now he's got Dan Lanning to worry about. So give me well, I don't think I, don't, I mean, I don't think he got rid of <laughs> Harbaugh. I, I think, no, I think hey, Harbaugh went You just gave two picks back right there. Those are losses. <laughs> yeah. Let's keep it moving. Number 11, Iowa State versus West Virginia. West Virginia is a dog plus 3.5 uh, over under 53 and a half. Very interesting game here, fellas, because uh, the winner is going to be tied with Texas Tech at the top of the Big 12. And the loser will find themselves a game, uh, half a game behind. So pretty interesting, uh, pretty interesting game here. Um, I am going to go ahead and pick Iowa State. I have been a believer in Iowa State all year. 
Um, they're just a tough team. They always have been. I, I, I look at them and I say that all the time, very similar to Kansas State. West Virginia, on the other hand, I don't know how real they are. Um, it's always nice to have a running quarterback, but I think they run into a, a real team in Iowa State. So give me Iowa State minus three and a half uh, in this one. I don't think West Virginia, West Virginia keeps up. My guy Rocco Becht is going to throw some TDs. Troy. <laughs> Yeah, this is an interesting one. Uh, Iowa State has probably played the worst Big 12 schedule uh, from the looks of it in the early onset, right? Baylor and, and Houston, uh, not too – they haven't struggled very much. They did beat Iowa in a close game. Uh, and then West Virginia has had Oklahoma State and Kansas. Uh, both games in which they won, they lost to Pitt, which was a close game. And, and what they've done this year is score points. Uh, and so this game being at home, uh, I think they'll be able to score points, and they're going to for- force Iowa to think about scoring points. Uh, and because of that, I think it's going to go over 53 and a half. Hmm. Dylan? I think Iowa State has a lot of success on this past defense of West Virginia. Don't get me wrong, three and a half home dog in the Big 12 is tempting, but – I just don't see how West Virginia stops Rocco Beck. I think Iowa State puts up a big number on West Virginia, and I think West Virginia struggles to move the ball that much on uh, Iowa State. So I'll take Iowa State minus three and a half. There you have it. Number 18, Kansas State versus Colorado. Colorado is a dog plus three and a half, over under 56 and a half. Dylan. Yeah, Colorado's been a fun story. Media darlings, as we know. Travis Hunter's amazing. Shador has been good. Kansas State has too many options in the running game. I think they run all over that front seven. I'll take Kansas State minus three and a half on the road again. I know a home dog in the Big 12 is hard to pick against, but I think this Kansas State kind of has their way on the ground and uh, should win this one probably by a touchdown a little bit over maybe. I know everyone was excited a couple weeks ago when Colorado looked like a complete team and they ran all over UCF, right? That was UCF. Um, Ran all over UCF, threw it all over the yard, played some defense. UCF sucks. Um, So as excited as people can be, uh, it wasn't as impressive. I I don't think Kansas State allows that um, type of behavior as uh, UCF did. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick Kansas State minus three and a half. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'd love to see Colorado win up until the Tech game because, look, if Texas Tech can win up up until that game and Colorado can, there's a, there's a real chance that that game could be game day. Um, if you just think about the sex appeal with, with Coach Prime and then you think the sex appeal of those new sexy jerseys that Pat just brought out for us. Hey, there's a little too much sex going on here. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, we're picking frisky. games. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Everyone's getting a little excited now. This, hey, this, <laughs> this, this, this ain't rolling in dough after dark. Come on, take it easy, Tan. Not yet. <laughs> yeah, it's getting there. Um, so, anywho, it, there, there just is a possibility that that game could be game day, just with all the excitement around around that the possibility. Uh, however, if Colorado loses this game, I think that that probably goes out the window. So, my heart wants Colorado versus Texas Tech to be an undefeated Big 12 matchup. I think Kansas State wins minus three and a half. Troy. Nick, we still got the three games on our schedule that we need to win. So that's why I'm saying that's why I'm saying, dude, fingers crossed. It's it's a big ask. Yeah. Uh give me the over in this one. Uh both teams can score and Colorado's not going to let up at any point in this game. Not that they'll be winning by you know a whole bunch. Uh so give me the over 56 and a half. And I almost want to take Kansas State to cover the plus three, but I do think Colorado wins at home. Uh, give me Colorado plus three and a half. I'll take the hook. And <laughs> all right, so then we're pre- Troy. You're pretty much saying Kansas State is uh, going down, huh? Two losses. Yep, that's what I'm all saying. Right. All right, so our not a celebrity guest picker, we're going to bring him on now. You can see it. It's not Dallas. It is, however, Mike. 
It is Mike, Mike. from Dallas, if that's any consolation. Mike from <laughs> Dallas. Look at him. Mike from <laughs> Dallas. Welcome to the Tech and Tortilla podcast. You are our not a celebrity guest picker. Congratulations for not being a celebrity. How's that feel? What a surprise. Sort of an honor. <laughs> yeah. No, I guarantee it. Tell me about, you know, when you walk down the street and no one recognizes, recognizes you. Is that a nice feeling? Uh, yeah. I uh, prefer to live in anonymity, but... Uh... I've come excellent. out of anonymity for 10 minutes for you guys. Excellent. <laughs> excellent. Well, we're glad to have you. And I hope our guests, uh, hope they feel something when they see you, you know, they, uh, they'll Just respond. A little bit of joy. Little bit of joy <laughs> maybe, you know, I, I don't know. Look, my kids, what I'll tell you, I can't tell you, I don't know, but maybe they'll feel something. So Mike, you've seen the show. This is what we do here. We're going to ask you a few just questions about you, you know, um, and uh, then we'll go ahead and run through your picks, all right? And then we'll finish off. We're going to finish off with a very special pick this week. I guarantee none of you can guess what it is. <clears throat> so I'll lead off the first question. Mike, first question for you, Nick Dementia, Tech and Tortilla podcast. Um, how are you in our lives? Uh, I believe it's your oldest brother. Uh, Walk me through that. Because one day, Mike, I got to be honest with you. You just were there. Yeah, uh, that's that's generally how my friendships go. I just kind of, <laughs> you know, show up and stick around. And uh, yeah. went to school with your brother. Uh, seems like an all right dude. And it's been 11 years at this point. And now you find yourself on the Tech and Tortilla podcast. Yep, yep. A few, uh, a few fun Saturdays having to wrangle you. And uh, yeah. now we're here. Man, look at that. It's crazy, you know? It's crazy. Look Dylan, at look at us. Look Dylan, at us. <laughs> ask the man. All right, Mike, Dylan from uh, Tech and Tortillas here. So, you know, from Calcutta's to watching some football together, we, we've all enjoyed uh, some time together. I just have a question for you, though, around the booking process for this. Why do you think Troy struggles so much with booking guests, and how did that affect you? Uh, luckily I don't have kids. I just have a wife and two dogs. So my Thursday nights are pretty open sans, uh, NFL, uh, NFL on prime video. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I have no, no free ads as to why your brother's <laughs> not good at uh, scheduling. Um, but if somebody could get that man a calendar, that would be. <laughs> okay. excellent, excellent. Hey, Mike, Nick Dementia, Tech and Tortillas, uh, rolling a dope podcast here. I actually have a follow-up question to Dylan's great question. Hey, um, when Troy makes these mistakes, do you feel like he could be replaced with someone else? Um, maybe someone that's named after a city in uh, North Texas. Uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna be Switzerland. I uh, I think Troy's great. <laughs> Interesting. What I heard was yes, Troy could be replaced with Dallas. Thank you, Mike. Troy, what questions do you have for Mike about your horrible scheduling? <laughs> yeah, in my absence, y'all did not succeed. I'm sorry. Um, my well, quick Nick, question. Nick didn't know who I was the first time, so that was that was just a tad shocking, but we got over it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have your number saved, Mike. That was on me. That's on me. It's yeah, saved now. I sent the text. Um, yeah, for me, you know, now we've done the Calcutta a few years in a row. Now we're doing these picks. Can you tell me what goes into the preparation for, for these type of uh, events? Uh, yeah, I, uh, I get up in the morning, uh, on Saturday, I go work out, I get a coffee and then I sit on the couch for about seven to eight hours and watch games. Mm. And hopefully I learn something in the process. Mm. Then we do it all over maybe, again on Saturday or on Sunday. Excuse me. Maybe learn a little about yourself as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm. So the guests know, um, Troy actually overbooked. Three weeks ago, uh, he booked uh, Sam and also Mike. So Troy's not even referencing that mistake that he made uh, on top of the mistake of not letting Mike know that we weren't having a guest picker the other Nick. week. Um, and, then, and then he has the, the gall to ask Adapted. Mike about preparation when he can't even book him correctly <laughs> to help him prepare for this. Yeah. Yeah, Troy, but the only preparation guys, you need guys, to worry about said, is preparation age. He's great. I said he's great. 
okay? Guys, yeah. I feel like I'm getting ramrodded here. Yeah, <laughs> again, Troy. <laughs> yeah, Troy. Game. Troy, the only preparation you need is preparation H, pal, okay? All <laughs> right. Listen, I get it. I won the picks last year. I'm in first place this year. You guys can take a chill pill and – Mike you, Mike, you, Mike, Mike, you've been a, a real sweetheart. So let's get to the picks. Enough, <laughs> enough. What's about Troy? Let's get to the picks. All right, Mike. So you kind of know how this goes. We're going to rattle off a few, and we'll go from there. All right. So first pick, number sixteen, Utah versus Arizona State. Arizona State is the dog by plus five over under forty six. What do you got, Mike? Yeah, I think this one is kind of like: Is Cam Rising going to play or not? Uh, I don't trust the younger Wilson. Mm. Um, hasn't looked phenomenal. I think it was last week. He didn't look great either. Uh, I feel like both teams are just going to run the ball. I like the under on this game. Uh, Statabo's good back. They've got their starting quarterback. Let's go Arizona State plus five. All right. All right. I like that. You like, so are you picking the under also, or are you just picking plus five? Uh, under 46. All right. Two Ooh. picks. Mikey, two picks. I like that. All right. Troy, let's keep it moving. But that's all subject to Cam Rising not playing, which I mean, if he <laughs> yeah, it'll be all if good. he stays on brand, then yeah, the the picks are accurate. <laughs> if, yeah, well, if he stays on if he stays on brand, he's not real, so it doesn't matter. He'll yeah. be fine. He doesn't, he doesn't exist, Mike. <laughs> all right, next game: Arizona versus number fourteen BYU. BYU's favored by three over under forty eight and a half. Uh, BYU's a hard place to play. They got the Cougar dancing. Everybody's going nuts. Not a lot to do in Provo. You're at altitude. Uh, I like BYU minus three. Red Slaff has looked fine. Noah Fafita can't stop throwing picks. Um, I feel like Tetro McMillan's like, you know, Thanos level boss just surrounded by like not a lot of support. Uh, <laughs> so BYU minus three. I like the over on that one. All right. Oh. You don't you know you don't have to make two picks. I like that you're doing it, but sure. I just in case I never come back, you know, want to get <laughs> double up, baby. Double up. Mike, I can already tell you it's been electric the way we got to make fun of Troy with you. So uh you'll be coming back. <laughs> um, you fit right in. Let me let me tell you something. You mentioned dancing cougars. <laughs> I just want to make sure that we're I just want to make sure we say this is I'm, not, and we said this earlier. This is not rolling in dough after dark. I feel like that – I'm talking about the mascot. What you're referring to might be illegal in Utah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, time out. Not according to the moms of – the moms of uh, – what is it? The Mormon moms of Utah or something? Is it like the secret lives of – Yes, Mormon secret lives, lives of Mormon wives. Yeah, there we go. You know what I'm talking about. They know what I'm talking about, BYU. All right, next game, number one, Texas versus 18, Oklahoma. Plus 14, Oklahoma is the dog, over under 49. Yeah, uh, one of one of uh, the two rivalries uh, each of these teams will have for the year. Uh, I think it was you commented, yeah, it gets weird. Um, it does. I feel like 14 is just too many points. Um, I don't think Quinn Ewers is as good as everybody says he is. Uh, UT has a very, very good squad, um, but I really just don't know how you can trust a guy who gets an abdominal spray, strain and it's like non-contact. So uh, let's go Oklahoma plus 14. I feel like it's going to be something close. Like the the over-under here is kind of a, a toss-up. So I'll, uh, I'll skip on the over-under here. All right, plus 14. Love the pick. Next game, number four, Penn State versus USC, plus three and a half. USC is the dog, over under 51. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of torn on this because USC had a really bad loss last week uh, in Minnesota. So you'd think USC would be up for it. Also, uh, I think kind of one of the theme, one of the themes in the Big Ten is that, you know, teams crossing more than one time zones are having supreme difficulty playing mm -hmm. away games. So, uh, my heart mm -hmm. says Penn State's going to run for a million yards, but reality, I think USC is probably going to take it money line, and I like the over. All right. I like that. A little aggressive pick. 
Well, now we got number nine, Ole Miss versus number 13, LSU. LSU is a dog, plus three, over under 62. Uh, I'll start with I feel like there's going to be a lot of points in this game. Um, I watched the LSU A&M game. I wasn't super impressed either way. Uh, Ole Miss. That's not that's not shocking when A&M's on the field. Uh, yeah, I mean, Ole Miss is stacked. They should win, but it is, you know, you are going to Tiger Stadium. Uh, man, let's roll Ole Miss money line over 62. All right, there you go. Number two, Ohio State versus number three, Oregon. Oregon is a dog plus three over under fifty four. You're gonna you're gonna take your by uh, sorry Big Ten logic again. See, this one's kind of tough because I feel like the general mm -hmm. consensus for teams is it's like UT Ohio State, and then kind of everybody else is what all the pundits are saying. So if that's correct, then. Ohio State money line should be the pick. Uh, I'm I'm gonna go against my own wisdom and say Ohio State money line and take the over here. I didn't know you were a pundit guy. Watch a lot of TV. Mm, it's fair. It's fair. <laughs> so what happens when you don't uh, have any kids? A lot of time. A lot of time. Well, to, you also actually watch a lot of football. I, I having a, a nine month, a nine week old baby. You tend to watch a lot of football at that time as well. Eight hours of you're sleep. Just, you're just, hours you're just doing this. Yeah, it's a lot. Also, I think we're like I think we have like forty nine or forty eight days of straight football right now. Fifty. Oh, it's awesome. 50, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. I, yeah, it's yeah, I think it was 50, 54, 54 53. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was fifty five, I think, starting last Thursday. Yeah, it's catch me out. Uh, number 11, Iowa State versus West Virginia. West Virginia is a dog at home, plus three and a half, over under 53.5. I like West Virginia here because it's at West Virginia. Uh, I'll even take a money line. I was not impressed by Iowa State in the first half last week. Baylor is awful. Uh, Dave Aranda is probably going to be a Texas Tech defensive analyst in the next year or two. Uh, and I thought Baylor might have had him. Iowa State turned it on. Uh, but give me West Virginia money line, and uh, let's go under 53 and a half. All right. Garrett Green was supposed to be a Heisman candidate. What happened? What are you going to do? Can't throw. Uh, tr all right. We got number 18, Kansas State versus Colorado. Colorado plus three and a half at home, over under 56 and a half. This one's interesting. Uh, I think the clear answer here is Kansas State minus three and a half. They can really run the ball. Uh, Avery Johnson is one of the best running quarterbacks in the country. Colorado also a great, also a great basketball player. Roster. And uh, their O-line's been kind of cobbled together. Uh, but uh, there is one wrench uh, in, in this whole uh, – in this whole problem, and his name is Matt Wells. So if Matt Wells can keep it together and not throw the ball 30 times uh, this game, I think Kansas State covers. It's a pretty sensible yeah. wrench. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's a pretty massive wrench. Very good, Troy. Very good. Yeah, yeah we've, I, we've I, seen what that wrench can do. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it was a painful couple of years. But, uh, here's, what, here's what he can do. He can do two things. He can – he can recruit tight ends, and he can lose your football games. Even that, you know, even saying recruiting tight ends, he really screwed up that Jalen Conyers thing. But he did get yeah. Mason Tharp. Well, so uh, Jed Wells is at ECU now, and Mason Tharp is, you know, he's good. I think we should use him more. But excuse me, yeah, he's technically <laughs> not even the number one tight end. So what can he really do? He can be tall. Well, I was talking about Wells. I'm not going to, you know, I, I really like Mason Tharp. I think Good we should throw him more. A lot of yeah. nice fans there. All right. And finally, the game of the week. Everyone's been waiting for it. We're all, we've all been talking about it. Massive, massive game here. Texas Tech University versus the bye week. Tech is favored by seven, over no, under 61 and a half. Nick, Nick, we're dogs. 
We're dogs going in the bye <laughs> the week. The bye Just week is you. favored. They didn't rank us, Nick. They didn't rank Shocking. us. Shocking. We're not favored against the bye week. The bye week is favored. Tech is plus seven. Mike, lead us off. Zach Kitley throws 60 consecutive screens. Tech by a million. Boom. Oh. Dylan. <laughs> Well, Nick, so I have Arizona State plus five, Arizona covering and winning, and Colorado losing. All three of those things happening equals Texas Tech winning the bye week. Helps our uh, games we've already played, plus it helps us, you know, gain a little ground in the standings. So by that logic, Tech money line here easily, right? Tech's going to win be. the bye. It's got to be. Troy? <clears throat> yeah, everything that Dylan keyed in on, I think we have a great week. Um Teams lose the teams that are going to lose that are going to help us out. And I think the other piece to mention is we're going to get healthy. That back seven, they're going to get healthy uh, and they're going to be ready uh, and have a good week of practice. Uh, and I think we cover, we went outright, and Texas Tech scores about uh, 61.5 points by himself. Yeah, here's what I'm going to tell you um, give me the over because Tech's going to score 100 points. And here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. Give me the alternate line. Tech minus 100 points. I'm going to bet the house on it. Find out. Everything runs through. Tech and tortillas. Everything runs through. Tech and tortillas. I'm about to make a million dollars on this bet. We're taking down the bye week. It's over. Cash in the chips, baby. Cash in the chips. All right? It's done. You tell Vegas, Troy. You tell him. All right, he told Can't me. wait to see it. All right, guys. Hey, Mike, thanks for joining us today, brother. I appreciate it. And thanks, all of you, for watching today. It's the Rolling and Dope Podcast. Please like and subscribe. Follow us on X, TikTok. Please subscribe on YouTube. See us on everything. Let us know what you think. We love hanging out with you guys. Wreck them. <laughs>